For them, it's like a whole year. So many kids are more in summer school than they are in graduating class. Wow. That's interesting. Very interesting. Now, according to a Stein's report, 532 employees were contacted for uh, when he conducted his uh, internal inquiry. 243 did not respond. Another 139 declined the interviews, and 19 were interviewed because uh, were not interviewed because of scheduled conflicts, which left 131 uh, people who did participate, and only one person said he may have felt pressure to donate or volunteer with their campaigns. Now you've been an uh, advocate for the kids over 15 years now, right? Yes. I'm gonna be a straight shooter. Are you buying that story? <laughs> no, not at all. The simple fact is, I want to see the names who they interviewed because they have more family members working on the board. Oh, that's great. Okay, then they do outsider teachers, administrators. That's right. That's you, right. you know, if they interview their family, and you know, that that's kind of funny in a way because right now, a lot of these teachers are walking on eggshells because they don't know if they're going to get a pink slip or not. So when, when, I, when I found out that they were um, conducting this and they came out asking people, come, you could sit in my office and tell me what's going on, I laughed. Me, me and a bunch of my colleagues, we were laughing. We were like, okay, what idiot, excuse my expression, what idiot? going to come and says, they're twisting my arm doing this. But let's, now if Stein was a very smart guy, in which I thought he was, I, I really thought that, that the guy was smarter than, than what I've seen, he would have conducted the investigation also with the other people that spoke to the star ledger, that spoke to the prosecutors, that a lot of the teachers, why were all 300 people laid off, but none of his, the family members were let go? That's interesting. Why was it that it was, this interview was conducted during school hours? Uh, and from what I understand, were they uh, at the EA at, office, yeah. office on this avenue? EEA, that's another one, Rose Coretta. The, uh, she she's the worst because she holds a job as the EEA, also as an EEA the, president. Yeah, and where the, most of the time is consumed on Elizabeth Avenue office. She receives a stipend and, as a president, exactly. and she has a no-so job as a guidance counselor. Exactly. In the Mitchell Building, where there's no kids. Exactly. And that's what I'm trying to say. A I waste of taxpayers' money. Not only that, where did you conduct this? Who did you conduct? I want to see names. You're calling a prestigious uh, newspaper that's been around for many years. If they fabricated anything, they want to put the names of these individuals that's that came right. forward. That's right. Yeah. They cannot turn around and have picked them. But what has Stein given? Stein hasn't given us any names. So to me, he fabricated the story. So it's a bunch of horse and pony show. Exactly. It's the, uh, it's the reverse. <laughs> you know? Okay. Star Legend was telling the truth. Stein was fabricating. And he just thought, let me keep 585000 that he received. You give me a third, and I'll tell them that they're not guilty. <laughs> OK. OK. I see you're very passionate about uh, education thing. OK. Upset. But, now, the assistant board secretary, Donovan Galvez, said, I'm quoting him, we are humbled and thankful that such a respected independent investigation has vindicated all the hard work that the teachers and administrators do in the district. Do you think Stein's partisan report vindicated them? <laughs> uh, they're happy. Okay. They're happy because you know this is another cover up. I remember a couple of years back, they used the same cover up. Um, to me, I, I tell you like this, Concavas is another one. It works in their favor to show, look, we're not innocent. We're doing good to take the focus away from them. Yeah, that, that's, um, I'm like, if he's an assistant board secretary and Kennedy is the board, actual board, why doesn't Kennedy go public and make this announcement. Why is the assistant? I mean, there's no barons, uh, uh, but I'm just 
just curious, why is he making statements as opposed to Kennedy? Because Kennedy, he's a very nice man. I don't, I, I, I can't say anything negative about Kennedy, but you know something, I think that he's not a talker. Okay. You know, I think that he has a little bit morals inside him that if he's pressured, I think that he would talk. Come Cox is, is a, a is a flunky to that. Okay? <laughs> he's a, he's another puppet that you tell him jump the last cow high. <laughs> Come Cox also, you know, he has um been doing things that it's not ethical in, okay, inside now, of you, you mentioned something before this segment about the bread company. Can you speak to that issue about the bread company and the relationship, the bread that's delivered to the school board, and what is the relationship to Dr. Cowboys? <laughs> Dr. Cowboys thought that I wasn't going to find out, but that's his father. -in -law. Okay, what's the name of the bread company? Take Shares. Okay. Take Shares. Okay. That's his father in law's company. Oh, okay. <laughs> And then just the time, let's move on. Uh, during the press conference, Stein also mentioned something about Title I money that the board, uh, at the time, people were under the impression they misappropriated. Can you speak to that issue about that money? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I bought that note just in case you had an ask me some. Okay. This was about $2 million in which that was um, misappropriated. $2 million. I went to a meeting and I see the accountant there, Mendoka and Suarez. Now, why does that name sound familiar, Mendoka and Suarez? Mendoka and Suarez, I, I know Elder, very good, very nice guy. But then when I started looking at it, and then I was like, how do they tie in? When I was looking into it, there was a board member, Tony Montero. He was a board member at the time. That is also in which Tony Montero owns this restaurant. Soldomino, okay. or Soldomar in Roselle Park, in which Mendoka and Suarez and 10 other from the same firm are all business partners inside this restaurant. Oh. And in fact, uh, a couple of years back, Mendoka and Suarez gave money to their campaign. Oh. So that's called conflict of interest. interest. Because right. once you give money, you're not supposed to be hired. Okay, okay. Now, according to the Title 18A of the Education Law Book, if a school is in their second year of not making AYP adequate yearly progress, the parent has the option in sending their child to a school in a district with, with transportation that is making AYP. Does the Board of Education do a great job of informing the parents about their recourse? Oh, no, I, and, and, and it was funny, in my office I had a parent that came in, okay, that her daughter was asked to move out of school because she couldn't learn anything in class. Right. And uh, she wanted to be moved out of Dwyer. Dwyer has not um, done AYP. So she had asked if she could be moved, and the secretary told them no, that they don't have room in the other schools. That's untrue, because when the parent asks for their child to be moved, okay, and that school has not done the AYP, they have to move that child. And they said that they've tried numerous times of making appointments with um, Pablo Munoz, and never, never are they able to see uh, Mr. Munoz. Uh, they see a Mr. Dunn, but they said it's just like seeing nobody. So the child is left in the school and in a class that she turned around and she said, she's willing to come forward too. Okay. She says that there's no teachers in her class, that there's so much disturbance in, in the classroom, okay? She has a hard time understanding. She used to be an A student. She went down to a C. All she wants to do is go to another school so she could get the, the right education because they've already told her that she won't be graduating. Now she's in the 10th. For a 10th grader to hear that you're not graduating in two years because your classes, your, your grades are going down, yeah, that's, that's going to make the child drop out. Okay. I just informed my, uh, my producer that we're out of time, but I want you to come
come back on this show because you you create interesting dialogue because you're very passionate about this educational issue. So you promise me you'll come back? Yes. Okay. That wraps up our show. However, I would like to thank our guest, Ms. Maria De Rossi, education activist and a member of the Elizabeth Coalition on Education Accountability, and you, our viewing audience. Until next time, instead of criticizing, get involved. Instead of being subjective, be objective. Power concedes nothing without a demand. In the words of our late freedom fighting sister, Vicki White, what are you prepared to do? If you have any comments about this show, email us at grassrootspeak, the number 18, at yahoo.com. Power.